We're hooking up our ground wire outside the powerhouse right now. We have this armored ground. You have to attach the series of nuts, that apparatus, um, to your rod. It just clamps down. And then you feed the wire through. Kind of throw a bend in it there. Kind of like a big electrical outlet. Hold something. No. Different type of pirates would work. A little better. Trying to avoid that overlap. Yeah, and I was trying to. You know, kind of get it in there a lot better. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was too big. Should be able to make that work. I'm sure, a pair of needle nose would have worked a lot better for making my circle. Probably just goes like that, given the size of the clamps. Now we'll go inside and show you where it goes into the system. So, our DC main is off. Just want to show everyone that. And uh, now we are grounding the system to that ground wire, which is coming out right there. So we fed it through the wall and uh, made sure you get more than enough. Yep. Yeah. There's no such thing as a wire stretcher, much like a board stretcher, so you want to get extra. Now we're going to snip off that armor to where it's going to feed into the box. Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh oh. Yeah. Did you clip the wire? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh oh. Crisis averted. Fortunately, William did get extra wire. And we uh, went for round two with a sawzall with a blade on it that uh, is meant for trimming through metal. We were super, super careful. We actually looked up on YouTube a video that showed us nicely kind of best practices well, for doing this. Say best practices, but it showed you a cheap option. Well, yeah. I mean, just like anything, they make a tool specifically for this purpose. I'm sure it's a zillion dollars. It was $35. That's a for zillion a, dollars. For a name brand. That's a zillion dollars in That's my cheap. world. That's cheap. We have different ideas of cheap. It's cheap compared to the specialty socket I just ordered. Well, it's probably cheap compared to the wire. <laughs> I don't know how much the wire was. Where's our clamp? Ah, okay. So now we need one of these. Get a 
square bit driver. You can use a regular flat, but these square bits, woo, look at that. So much nicer. This box here that we're working in is where the power ultimately comes out of to feed the house. And you can toggle it between coming off the inverter, there's our inverter, or the generator, once you hardwire a generator in there. And we don't have that done yet, but it's on the list. In the meantime, it's cloudy and rainy and kind of yucky, depending on your uh, perspective. And we are still sitting at 56.9 volts. Yay! That means we have extra power to pull our uh, house off of. And what this means is that you can draw um, power without depleting your batteries because we have a 48 volt battery bank. And so at 48 volts is where you start dipping into your battery reserves. And at that point is really when you should charge up with a generator and pull your power that way. But yeah, 56.9 is way higher than 48. So that's really cool. I grew up with 24 volt systems and our power meters like this were always in the house. We're all also actually gonna mount one of these in the house so we don't have to trapes all the way out here to check it out um and our rule of thumb for me growing up with a 24 volt system was whenever this meter read 23.9 was when we had to go fire up the generator so you just keep an eye on it throughout the day that's part of off-grid living make sure you're living within your means in terms of your power and either turn something off or fire up the generator to make sure you don't hurt your we equipment get, we get more power that too, ultimately that is the plan. There's no reason you can't live a perfectly modern lifestyle um, off the grid. All right, how we, how we doing? So the armored ground comes in here, loops around there, and is secured to the bus bar in there. Yeah, and, and the bus bar is where you need these square drivers. Ah, okay. You can see that the, the inverter is wired over there, mm -hmm. and then the thicker wires, which are the ones that go to the house, are also wired into here. This is a toggle switch for the generator on the left. It's a breaker. Well, breaker, yeah. So you, right now our generator breaker is off and our inverter breaker is on. But when you drop below your voltage, which in our case is 48, you would switch that once you have your generator hardwired in there. And then you'd fire up the generator and away you go. We're pretty excited because our system is pretty well all put together now.